Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to designing a precision negative voltage reference circuit. And before we get started, I'll just mention, please support Forstronics on Patreon where you can find exclusive content, including exclusive content from this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Forstronics YouTube channel. And if you like what you see here, please hit the thumbs up. All right, let's get started. Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at a circuit design to create a high precision, high accuracy voltage reference signal that's a negative voltage reference signal, not a positive voltage reference signal. There's a lot of voltage reference ICs out there that do positive voltages, but not many or at least none that I've seen that do negative voltages. So we'll look at a circuit design concept where we can take a positive reference voltage and turn it into a negative reference voltage. And why do we care? Why would we need a negative reference voltage? The reason I needed it was for bipolar ADCs and DACs. You can also use a precision negative voltage reference to shift signals. So for instance, if you have a unipolar signal and you want to make it bipolar, you could shift it between op amp stages using a negative voltage reference. And then also you could even use it to serve as the power supply for op amp for when you have really high accuracy and high precision applications. But that basically cuts down on you know power supply noise for precision applications. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna start with just a high level look at a circuit where we can take a positive voltage reference and turn it into a negative voltage reference. Then we'll look at an actual implementation with two voltage references. So we'll use a voltage reference IC that does 2.048 volts and 4.096 volts. And we'll take both of those levels and turn them into a negative voltage with very, very close specs as the original voltage reference. I hope that makes sense. I will mention, we're going to leverage a design that I covered in my last video series, which was a two-part video series, and it was called Two Circuit Designs That Generate a Negative DC Voltage from a Positive DC Voltage. Well, for these circuit, we're going to need a negative DC voltage. So I'm going to leverage the inverter DC to DC converter design from that video series so I'm not gonna go over that in detail. I'm gonna assume you watch that video and I'll provide a link to it in the description of this video. And then lastly, I'll mention there'll be some exclusive content from this video on my Patreon page for my subscribers. And I'll include a PDF diagram of the example design we're gonna put together. It'll also include a bill of materials or a bomb for all the parts I used in my example circuit, all the part numbers and things like that. And then I'm also gonna include some extra video content where we do an accuracy calculation and drift calculation for our negative voltage reference signal. All right, let's take a look at our negative voltage reference circuit. Okay, so here's the high level circuit and we're gonna jump into a real implementation of this uh, in my schematic. And so all we're gonna do for this circuit to generate a negative voltage or a precision negative voltage reference is first start with a positive voltage reference, right? And you know it could be 2.048 volts, which we'll use in our example, could be 2.5 volts, or it could be other values. I just list those values because those are common values for voltage references. But any value voltage reference, positive voltage reference, you can use. And that's and this is I'm sort of representing this resistor with this uh, precision diode, Zener diode, as sort of the diagram for my voltage reference IC. Then next, I'm using an op amp and I'm configuring it in an inverting fashion. So if you look, the, our voltage reference value, which I'm representing as VREF plus, is going into the negative or inverting input of the op amp and the non-inverting input is tied to ground. And so this is a common configuration for op amps. And all we do is have two resistors that set the gain. And since this is inverting, the gain is going to be multiplied by a negative one. So we just have R2 over R1 gives us, multiplied by negative one, gives us our gain, right? And in my example circuit, R1 and R2 are going to be equal. So we just have a gain of negative one. So we just are inverting our positive voltage reference into a negative voltage reference on the output. If you wanted to get a higher a more negative value voltage reference from a positive one, you could you know, set the gain and amplify that. This circuit looks pretty simple and it, it is pretty simple for the most part, but there's some things you have to keep in mind. 
To get a negative voltage out of an op amp, you need a negative voltage power supply. So in this diagram, VSS is supposed to be our negative voltage power supply and VCC is gonna be our positive voltage power supply. For our example circuit, VCC will be five volts and VSS will be negative five volts. And for our example circuit, all we need is the five volt input and we'll have an inverting DC to DC converter that'll generate the negative five volts, right? So the only input to our example circuit, which I'll show next is five volts. And what do you get? You get not only the positive voltage reference values, you also get the output from the op amp, which is gonna be the negative voltage reference values. And you also have the built-in VSS on that design. But we also have some other considerations you have to be aware of, right? So if you want to get close to the accuracy of the positive VREF coming from the voltage reference IC, you need to pick an amplifier that has really good specs so it doesn't add too much uncertainty, right? Not only the op amp, the resistors. We want to get very high accuracy resistors because any error in those resistors will lead to some kind of gain that's not negative one. And when you look at op amps, you want to be pay close attention to noise specs. A lot of times it's noise one over F, which is flicker noise out to 10 Hertz, but you can also have higher frequency noise, which is sometimes referred to as noise spectral density specs. And so you want to make sure that those specs, because those specs will be for the op amp and the, and the voltage reference will also have similar specs, right? So if you don't want the op amp to add a lot of noise, get it so it has those specs much lower than the reference voltage. Also offset voltage, right? That's gonna add air to the voltage reference as well as things like bias current and offset current. And we'll go over some of those uncertainty calculations in the exclusive part of the video. All right, you also wanna be aware of the specs for the ADC and DAC. If the ADC and DAC have an external reference input for a negative reference, a lot of times they'll specify a bandwidth and that bandwidth is going to be related to how fast they sample. So the higher the sampling rate for the ADC, the higher the reference voltage bandwidth that they're going to ask for. And you might say, well, reference voltage is a DC voltage. Why do I need a, a bandwidth spec tied to that? Well, that's because they're really talking about the output regulation, right? When you consume current from the voltage reference really quick, and that current fluctuates, if the load regulation is not good, you'll start to get a little uh, movement on that, that reference voltage. And so the bandwidth is related to that. So you need a high output bandwidth so that voltage doesn't get moved around when the ADC is sampling real quick. Okay, and for the power supplies, you know whether you're creating the power supply voltages on the design or they're coming from somewhere else, you wanna make sure they're low noise, right? Because power supply noise can get into the amplifier and get onto the output signal. So for our design, we want to use a five volt input that's low noise and the VSS will handle on the board and make sure it's low noise. And then also be aware that you want to choose, if we're generating negative voltage references, we want to make sure that VSS is high enough so that we don't saturate the, the op amp. Even if you get an op amp that says it's rail to rail, there's no such thing as a rail to rail op amp, right? So a lot of op amps can get within, you know, 200 millivolts of one rail, 100 millivolts, maybe 300 millivolts. So make sure VSS is high enough that the output voltage reference isn't going to saturate the amplifier or get close to saturating the amplifier because then you'll get some air on the output. So for our example, we'll use a, the highest voltage we'll use is a negative 4.096, but VSS will be negative five volts. So we have almost a 900 millivolt cushion. So we don't have to worry about saturation. All right, so we have a high level overview of how our circuit works and the circuit design. Let's look at a real life implementation of it. Okay, here is my PCB layout software with the schematic for this design, example design I'm gonna go over. The red boxes represent components or power buses and the green wires are just connections. So wherever a green wire makes a connection, that's basically an electrical connection. And when you see labels on green buses like VREF 2 volts, then you also see it here, VREF two volts, that represents an electrical connection, right? So let's start with our reference IC. So this is a reference IC from Texas Instrument. A lot of voltage reference ICs come either from Texas Instruments or analog devices. This one is a fairly good accuracy one, and it has a, I think the accuracy on this is, the absolute accuracy is 0.05% for both the 4.09 volts and the 2.048 volts. 
right? So this has two outputs. This is a voltage reference IC that has not just one, but two outputs. The input is going to be our VCC, which is the input voltage for this design, 5 volts, and you want to use low noise if possible. These capacitors, why did I put them here? Because that's what the data sheet for this reference IC told me, right? So I'm using ceramic capacitors with low ESR, and I'm going to put them real close to the pin when I do the PCB layout, less than 0.1 inches from the pin, as close as possible, right? Because that, that allows the I see to pull from that capacitor with very little uh, parasitic impedance between the capacitor and the pin. So that's why we want to put it close to the pin of the IC. The reference IC is pretty simple. We just need some capacitors, the IC, and we need uh, our power source. Here is the op amp. So since we're creating two different negative voltage references, we have a two-channel op amp. VREF underscore 2 volts is really 2.048. I just didn't want to write it out. And then, of course, VREF underscore 4 volts is the 4.096 volt output. So those go into this op amp as positive voltages. And since they're going in the inverting input of the op amp, they're going to get inverted to a negative voltage, right? And we can see this op amp has two supplies, right? It has the VCC, which is 5 volts and it has V negative, which is gonna be negative five volts. So we have two power supplies going into this. So we need that negative voltage power supply so we can invert our positive voltage signal and get a negative voltage out. So that's how we simply get our two voltages out, our negative voltages. And this op amp has great specs, and so it's gonna have very little effect. And we'll look at a demo of this circuit in action right after this. And then these capacitors are bypass capacitors for the power supply inputs to the op amp. Why did I choose them? Because that's what the data sheet for the op amp recommended. One of them is a ceramic cap. The other one is a tantalum cap. Why did I use tantalum? Because that's what the data sheet uh, asked for. And they have low ESR and low parasitic specs. Remember, tantalum caps are polarized, whereas ceramic caps, you can connect either side to positive or negative. So just keep that in mind when you're working with the negative voltage and you need to have these flips. So I have the plus side connected to ground because that's the higher voltage potential. And on here, I have the plus side tied to VCC. Okay, so here's a look. Oh, one last thing to mention. This short is meant to be our single point ground connection. So the VREF IC and the op amp, they're very precision signals. So I have them on their own analog ground plane and which will connect to the main ground plane, but it only connects at a single point connection. And this helps keep some of the noise from the main ground plane from getting on our precision ground plane. So we have this single point connection that I do at the bottom of the board to keep the noise on the ground plane away from our sensitive components. Now let's look at our power supplies and power input. Okay, this is part of the same designs, just on a different schematic sheet. And the big circuit here, U4, that is our inverted DC to DC converter, which creates a negative 6.2 volts. And I went over that in my other video, so I'm not going to talk about it in, in detail. But you might be saying, well, why negative 6.2 volts? And then why do you have this LDO over here? Well, that's because DC to DC converters are switch-based, right? So they're, they're noisy. And I have this configured for low noise. By taking that 6.2 volts and feeding it to a linear regulator, which drops it down to negative 5 volts, right? So this is a negative voltage linear regulator. You have to put in a, a more negative voltage to get a regulated negative voltage out. But what's nice about linear regulators is they have a spec known as PSRR, or power supply rejection ratio. So they actually act like a filter and block noise from the noisier DC to DC converter. So the whole reason I have this LDO is to reduce the noise on my negative power supply so that it doesn't get into the op amp and uh, add noise to my precision signal. You may or may not need that depending on your design. So that's just something you need to figure out based on the specs, the accuracy, and the noise things you're looking for. And by the way, I have a video explaining the power supply rejection ratio or PSRR specs for linear regulators. I'll provide a link for that in the video description if you want to check that out. And then we have our input 5 volts, right? So I just have some bypass capacitors here that act like filters to filter out noise. But I'm going to get that 5 volts from a linear regulator because I know it'll be cleaner. Based on your application, you might be able to use a noisier 5 volts. Uh, if you don't have 5 volts, and let's say you have a 
noisy 12 volt signal, you could always add a linear regulator to drop it down to five volts. And of course you get that same benefit of the PSRR of the uh, linear regulator. Okay, and then also there's a Zener diode just to protect it if someone puts in tries to put in too much voltage. So this is the circuit, pretty simple. Let's see our circuit in action. Okay, here we are looking at a design with that circuit on it. This has a couple other small things, so but mainly this is basically the same circuit design. And so this connection right here is the input five volts. I have it from a clean power supply. And then I have, you know, both my positive reference voltages on the output and my negative reference voltages on the output. So this board could it serve as voltage references for ADCs or DACs, and you get both the positive and the negative voltage references. Okay, so let's see this in action. So first, we're going to look at the negative 0 0.096. That's my five volt power supply. And you can see right there, that's pretty accurate, right? So we're getting negative 4.095 instead of 96. So there's two things we care about, right? The accuracy and how stable it is. And you can see it's very stable. You know, this, we're gonna assume this, this digital multimeter is perfect. It's not, but let's just assume it's perfect. The only error we see, and you can see it's not drifting much. So real good accuracy there. Now let's look at the negative 2.046 volt output. And there, that one's almost dead on. So that's only about uh, a little less than 100 microvolts off. But let's look at the positive voltage version of this. So we can kind of compare how they're different based on the op amp and the resistors, their effect on the uncertainty. So there I go, I connected it to the positive output. So now we have that same signal, except it hasn't gone through the op amp. So notice that this is about 100 microvolts off. Between the two, they're about 200 microvolts difference, which is essentially coming from the resistor feedback network and the op amp. And for those of you who watched the exclusive content where we went over the specs, this is well within the specs we calculated, which were about 2.6 millivolts plus or minus. So both of these uh, outputs are well within the specs working good, very happy how this circuit turned out. That's it for designing a precision negative voltage reference circuit. If you have any questions from this video, please use the comment section below. And if you have anything to add or anything you think I missed or anything like that, please use the comment section below. Thank you for watching.